delegates, fellow Republicans, and my fellow Maine citizens. You know, it's altogether fitting that we are gathering in our state capitol for this annual convention. It's also fitting because it's the, sea, the, the city of Olympia Snow's birth. The brilliant sunrise of her career began with her election to the Maine House of Representatives. She went on to win 14 consecutive elections. Did you know Olympia Snow is the first woman in American history who served in the state legislature, both the House and the Senate, and the Congress, both the House and the Senate. Olympia Snow has won more elections than any candidate since World War II. She served under six presidents of the United States. She won her last election to 75 percent vote. And you and I have this historic moment to watch the twilight of an incredible, dedicated career in public service. On this august occasion, I can't help but think of the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, What lies behind us? what lies before us is minuscule in comparison to what lies within us. And what I have come to know, and what I suspect most main citizens think instinctively, is that what lies within Olympia Snow is class. you in the state of Maine. What lies within Olympia Snow is elegance, service before self, courage, integrity, passion for Maine people. And what lies within Olympia Snow is that a rare characteristic we call leadership. successful leaders, whether they're in politics, business, humanity, sports, successful leaders, I've come to believe, embody four very simple characteristics that are in abundance in Olympia Snow. Successful leaders show up on time even when the task ahead is difficult or unpleasant. Leaders show up on time and they do what they say they're going to do. Leaders finish what they start. And most humbly, successful leaders say please and thank you. I've had the opportunity with Governor McKernan and Olympia Snow to personally thank them, but I'd like to publicly take this opportunity to thank them, and I suspect many of you in the room who have been candidates or have had the honor of raising your right hand to take the oath of office, or maybe you've had an opportunity to serve your community, our state, or even our country because of the leadership they recognize in you. So on behalf of all of us who care enough to be active in how our government works, I say thank you to Olympia for her and Governor McKernan's endorsements of my campaigns and 
Tours. Thank you for hosting and attending the events that made a difference in the candidacies of so many main public servants. And thank you for taking the time to care enough to give back and reach back and lend a helping hand. And you know, all of us who have a passion for how government works, whether you're here as a delegate or you're here as someone seeking office, we're not alone in our desire to say thank you. Watch the video and listen to other main citizens just a moment. When I ran for the United States Senate, I said I would always worry about America's place in the world, but that I would also always worry about Maine's place in America. I think she cares. I think that's what it is. She cares about the state of Maine. She wants to leave the state of Maine a better place. She's passionate about her work. She's passionate about this state. She's passionate about this country. She places Maine first. She makes Maine and Maine people a priority, making our lives better. We're a hard-working group of people. We wear our jeans, we get dirty, and we get the job done. And that's exactly what Senator Snow does. You know, she's represented Maine and Washington for 34 years. And the amazing thing is, she started each day like it was her first. And she's never forgotten who she is or who she's there to serve. She understands Maine values. She understands exactly who she is and who we are. Olympia Snow is a true Mainer. Always will be a Mainer. Definitely Mainer. Lifelong Mainer. Olympia is a very real person. I think she's fantastic. I would love to have a beer with her one night. In naming her one of America's top ten U.S. Senators, Time Magazine called her the caretaker for effectively fighting for the needs of her constituents. You don't hear her speaking all the time. You don't see sound clips and bites of her speaking all the time. You see her always listening. The president listens to her. People have elected this woman and we elected and re-elected her because they trust her. She's been diligent in her homework. She's studied the issues. She comes back to Maine all the time and is in touch with the people. Olympia studies the subjects, gets the facts, and then makes a decision before she votes that's good for Maine, and more importantly, good for the United States. Olympia's never been afraid to take the road to this traveled, to stand her ground, to stand on principle, no matter the politics. That's the main way. I like the fact that Olympia hasn't changed over time. She's the same person she's always been. She doesn't change, she doesn't flip flop around. I may not always agree with her, but I respect her. I think Senator Snow is a fighter. She fights for causes that are important to her. She speaks her mind and isn't afraid to voice her own individual opinion. She's, she's feisty in that regard. She's led on the most important issues of our time. Better health care, women's rights, a strong defense, lower taxes, less red tape, and a government that lives within its means. Olympia is a sensible voice leading the way on fiscal change. She's been a fiscal hawk since, uh, since I was a kid. <laughs> she is time for the If Senator Snow has her way, we will have a balanced budget. She doesn't want to see kids like Haley have arms of debt that they'll never be able to pay off. Maine has a huge small business population that honestly has been troubled over the years due to regulation and Senator Snow works very hard for small business. I think it's a great thing that she's willing to keep taxes low. Oh, Olympia is always for lower taxes. She's been strong on defense. She's been strong on veterans and retiree benefits. I think Senator Snow is a great Republican. She's a great leader and she's a great role model, not just for me, but for my daughter and for future generations of young women who are interested in politics. I know people all over the country who say to me, oh, you are so lucky to have Senator Snow as your senator. I really admire her. With her place in Maine history secure, Olympia now turns to a new chapter in her life. And wherever that leads her, you can bet on one thing. Olympia Snow will never turn away from her commitment to Maine and America. Her experience
Maine's, her integrity and her hard work are invaluable to the citizens of Maine. Olivia Snow is the best of what Maine has to offer. Straightforward, genuine, courageous, compassionate, kind. <laughs> She is I don't think Maine has ever seen a better set. Especially 
want to convey my deepest appreciation to all of you who have supported me across so many years. To you, it is impossible to adequately express the depth of my gratitude except to say that I'm forever and profoundly grateful for your extraordinary friendship. People have asked me how I've achieved my electoral success and earn the trust of Mainers for such an extended period of time. And so today, I thought I would also share with you my approach to public service that in my view can well serve anyone who desires to seek public office. When I first ran for Congress in 1978, I was motivated by one principle and overriding purpose, to fight for the ideals, values, the views, and the concerns of the people of our state. And it is this fervency of advocacy that has shaped and driven my every day in public office. Battling when the odds are long, leaving no stone unturned, and then looking for more stones to turn, and never being outworked when pushing an issue for this state. That's why I have fought tooth and nail for our farming and fishing communities and for our paper industry that form our economic and historic bedrock of our state. That's why I helped walk the high-level nuclear waste dump from being sited in Maine. That's why I moved heaven and earth to ensure Bath Ironworks will continue to build the destroyers critical to our future far into our future. That's why I secured vital heating oil fuel assistance for our most vulnerable when skyrocketing prices have threatened to leave them out in the cold. And that's why I joined with the legendary workers at Kittery Portsmouth Naval Shipyard and the Defense Finance Center located in limestone to save these model installations from closure during the right round of 2005. They must continue as an indispensable component of our United States military. And on a more national scale, as far back as the early 1980s, I was speaking out for America's small businesses, urging regulatory reform and lowering taxes. I was crafting, I was crafting alternative budgets to help us put us on a path towards a balanced federal budget so our children wouldn't inherit mountains of debt. I was investigating terrorism and passing measures to thwart potential terrorists long before the horrific attacks of September 11, 2001. In the Senate, I was proud to co-author the so-called E-Rate to ensure that our schools, libraries, rural health centers would be wired to the internet an innovation that one publication ranked among the most significant educational initiatives of the 20th century. I fought to preserve Social Security, which kept millions of Americans, seniors, out of poverty, especially crucial to Maine, which has the highest median age in the country. And I've never failed to stand by those who are standing tall and often sacrificing all for America. Our awesome men and women who bravely carried out their missions in Iraq and those now valiantly serving in Afghanistan and across the globe have been simply remarkable. that we can never fully repay, 
but that we must never, ever forget. I've begun every morning with every fiber of my being, relentlessly pursuing and fulfilling my role as a problem solver to those who have entrusted me with the public good. And in so doing, I have sought to be an independent voice for Maine because that's exactly and precisely what the Maine people want us to be. But also one that fundamentally views problem solving through the prism of those principles upon which this nation was founded. Principles with which the majority of Americans agree and principles that have formed the bedrock of our party since its inception. As I expressed during my first address to this convention in 1980 as a member of Congress, we believe as Republicans that the individual is more important than the state. We believe that the great days of our past can be the stepping stone to an even greater future. We believe a job is preferential to a handout. better than dependence. Yeah. The private sector is more productive than big government ever will be. Yeah. And we believe that as not every citizen enjoys the bounty of free enterprise, we must not let those Americans be forgotten because we are the party of potential. So as we gather here this weekend, let us remember that the continued strength of our party, our state, and our nation depends on electing leaders who embrace these foundational tenets. And that is why we are all the more fortunate that we have something at our convention this year that we didn't have in 2010. A sitting Republican governor. <laughs> from whom you just heard, with whom you agree. So aren't we grateful that we have Governor Paula Page at the helm? Led by Senate President Kevin Ray, Speaker of the House, Bob Nutting, they were simply outstanding. <laughs> and what a difference it has made in getting our state back on track. At a time when Maine has suffered one of the highest tax burdens in the nation and one of the lowest rankings for business environment. Governor LePage is reducing burdensome regulations and going beyond simply keeping taxes in check, has spearheaded the largest tax cut in the history of this state, all the while reducing spending and keeping the, federal, the state budget in control. And if that's not leadership, then I don't know what is. legislature and the governor have accomplished because what I just described to you they were able to accomplish in Augusta with the majority Republican legislature and with a Republican governor for the first time in 47 years to have both. We need to be talking about it. We need to be talking about it so that we can 
continue this transformation that they have developed and to maintain that momentum. They have made too much progress to turn back now. And of course, we can't stop there. As I'm sure you would agree, it's why that we work day and night to elect our outstanding Republican candidates from the first and second congressional districts. And we need to elect another Republican senator to join my colleague and our stellar United States Senator, Senator Susan Collins. <laughs> Senator Collins has made us proud as a strong voice for Maine and a thoughtful voice for our nation. And we know she will be a phenomenal senior senator. Maine is incredibly fortunate to have her. She will be in good hands, Maine will be in good hands, and so will our nation. And above all else, I hope you are ready to pull out all stops to make certain that Barack Obama goes into the history book as a one-term president. That's why it's imperative 
we overhaul a broken tax code, which includes the highest corporate tax rates in the world, that's impeding America's ability to compete in the global marketplace. It is imperative that we pass regulatory reform legislation that I've introduced and have been driving in order to counter the administration's record-breaking regulatory rampage that's suffocating small businesses. Even though my initiative had majority support in the United States Senate, it has been blocked twice by the Democratic leadership in the United States Senate. It is imperative we repeal the unconstitutional health care law that was enacted. Without a single Republican vote in either the House or the Senate. And we must keep fighting until Obamacare is repealed. Unless, of course, the Supreme Court does it first. It is imperative, finally, that we institute a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution that I have championed and co-sponsored 18 times during my tenure from my first days in the U.S. House of Representatives. one thing. You're going to hear during this campaign that a constitutional amendment to balance the federal budget is a gimmick. I've heard that argument over and over again in my years in the House and Senate. And my response has always been, if it was a gimmick, Congress would have passed it long ago. <laughs> No more lip service. We need this amendment, and we need it now. We can implement these changes, America's economic challenges demand, but only if we elect a Republican as president, sustain a Republican majority in the House, and recapture the United States Senate. We must proceed as a unified party once the primaries are over. So I say, let us come together so that we might seize the moment to remain the governing party of Maine and to recapture the governing majority of the United States of America. Not afford 
and more critically, our nation cannot afford to replicate the vacuum of leadership that characterizes the Democratic-led Senate along with President Obama, that has resulted in a legislative deadlock, leaving America's pressing problems unresolved. A vacuum created by their refusal to work across the aisle on the very issues that I've mentioned here today that will dictate the quality of our future. Rather, if the Republicans control the Senate, we must validate the trust of the American people. Hopefully, we'll have invested in us by seeking common ground to achieve the common good, to prove to the entire nation that indeed we can govern and we can do that based on our principles. Ultimately, when future generations look back at this critical juncture in our history, we want them to say that Republicans rose to the highest levels of leadership this moment in time commanded. Indeed, the very story of America's most formative days was defined by an understanding that effective governance requires a building of consensus and that such consensus is achievable even after the exercise of passionate advocacy, which brings us back to the creation of a document we all revere and cherish, and that is our United States Constitution. <laughs> 225 years ago, 55 delegates from divergent geographic and philosophical backgrounds converged on the city of Philadelphia to draft a new structure of government to strengthen our fledgling country. These were no shrinking violets. They had risked their lives and their fortunes to build and to establish a new nation unto God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. They were strong-willed and unabashedly opinionated. They disagreed and argued about a great many matters, both petty and consequential. Thomas Jefferson even considered Virginia, and not the United States, as his country. And yet, and yet, by the end of September of that year, 39 of the original delegates signed the most enduring and ingenious governing document the world has ever known. The Constitution of the United States.
in the end. It isn't about any one person or any one party. In the end, it's about the United States of America. Because we are the United States of America. It has been my honor and privilege to serve my beloved state of Maine and the great country that we are all privileged to live in because so many have sacrificed their lives to become the greatest nation the world has ever known. So thank you for that honor and privilege of serving you and the serving America. May God bless you all and may God bless America. Thank you.